Welcome to Horsepower, Chrome, and Rust, covering car culture and the automotive world with Shane Osborne, Brady Wright, and Steve, the producer, Johan. Let's see what's up this week. Hey, hey, hey. Sorry, just turning my phone down so it won't ring in the middle of the show. This is what is happening Tuesday, December 17th, 2019. Brady Wright, Shane Osborne, Steve, the producer, Johan, joining billions of listeners on this 116th episode of Horsepower Chrome and Rust. Coming to you through the magic of iHeartRadio, iTunes, Spotify, and of course, Podomatic.com. Make sure you like and follow our Facebook page for all the latest stuff, because if you don't, you are a loser, L O U. U-S-E-I-R-E. Our first segment is Back to the Blacktop. Steve Johan has automotive news and information as usual. What you got? Well, this comes from Mirror Mirror on the wall, Ooh. on the but it's Mirror Mirror on the truck. And okay. uh, Mirror Mirror <laughs> on the truck uh, may be making its way to America soon. Basically, the Daimler AG has been replacing mirrors with cameras <laughs> on an increasing number of trucks with the familiar Mercedes-Benz Star. The big mirrors, which are a major aerodynamic drag, are being small and streamlined. Camera armed uh, are mounted on the roof frame on trucks sold in Europe. And now this is what's really cool. The mirror cam consists of two cameras, one on left, one on right. Good and place two upright monitors mounted on the A-pillar. So when you're looking at it, it looks like there's your mirror on the right. There's your mirror on the left. It's about the size of this 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper, just a little but narrower. They're, but they're video screens? Yes. So you're looking at the side mirror, the, the blind spot, and the uh, behind you. And this is a, a video screen the video instead screen. of an actual mirror. Yes. So they're doing this. Let me get this straight. They're doing this to reduce wind drag. Yes. Because their cars are so aerodynamic as it is, and this is going to make a huge difference in the mileage. But But more importantly, you're adding what? I'm just going to arbitrarily say $2,000 worth of tech to the price of the car and two great big bright screens, one on either side of the windshield, where it's going to drag your eye away from actually watching the road while you're driving. Actually, the winds, they're right there at the A-pillar, so it, you yeah. are automatically looking to the left like you're going to look out at the mirror. So it does pretty much... The car itself anyway, so... <laughs> I'm sorry. I think that I'm a big uh, fan of technology. Turn your thing around there. You've got the, the number on the other side okay. there, Shane. Shane, is, Shane is speaking in the back of the microphone again. There you go. Ah, but oh, there we Dr. go. Dr. Technical. Um, well, I'm, you know, a, I'm a huge fan of technology, and I think this is actually kind of cool, but it, it's my nature to find, okay, what could go wrong with this plan? Oh, yeah, and the lots. first the first thing I think is, okay, at one point or another- A screen glitch. One, well, one well, of these things is going to break, <laughs> and if my mirror breaks- I can go to the junkyard and get another one for six bucks and put it in, and I'm okay. If the video camera breaks, or if the feed goes sideways, or the wire gets cut, or something like that, now I can't fix it. Now I got to go to the dealer, and well, let's see, 125 bucks an hour shop time minimum, plus whatever that screen is going to cost. Okay, you know Shane, what? Uh, okay, <laughs> Shane's, uh, Shane's over here counting up the money now. You can fix those, can't you, buddy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, 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 I'm going to tell you right now. Okay. I love the idea because I hate those damn mirrors that stick so freaking far out on box trucks and semi trucks and buses. I've I been in a it. bus where it's literally come down and smashed the mirror off of somebody oh, else's I've, vehicle. I've clipped a couple of mirrors in my day. Yes. I, I have. Okay. It would be nice to remove all that. So well, mm, I don't like mm. the big, the the dualies with the things that are three feet out in the well, front. Your trailer mirrors. Yeah, sure. I, I, I mean, come I, on. I get it. I, I'm not but a I'm fan not, of that stuff. I'm not sure a three thousand dollar. And I know, I know. There's a few people that have a uh, race truck, and they carry their their goodies in the back. But I'm telling you, I hate those mirrors. They stick so, so, so freaking far out. Daimler, you can't park next to them. Well, of course, there's that, and you can't even turn them in. <laughs> At so least the, my van, you can push them in, you know, and, and make a narrower footprint. So, so it's Daimler that's doing this, right? Daimler, yeah. Here. Okay. So what cars are they going to put these on? It's only going on their uh, their their trucks, so their big trucks. And, okay. And, and truck. their cab, and their, yeah, their driver cabs and that kind of thing. The Mercs, so, yeah. Yeah. All right. So I think it's going to be interesting to see if it makes its way here. And the other thing is it does it does clean up the looks of that vehicle. Because no longer do you have the aerodynamic, you got that nice aerodynamic look. And uh, look, it's no different than a guy with a custom motorcycle who removes darn near everything. No tarry light, just well, a little beam. <laughs> what? But he has a beer. 
You got to have mirrors on a motorcycle. You can't. Uh, yeah, really teeny ones, and then the back tail light looks like a bullet. That's the size of the bullet light on a, on a custom motorcycle well, on some it. of these things. I get it. But and did so, I see it stop? No, I didn't see. It. Sorry, I hit well, you. Well, they're bright. I mean, you can see them. Most people I'm are just using saying, LEDs these days. I like anyway, the aerodynamics. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm pro I'm for this. I'm all fan of aerodynamics. But to I be think honest, that's just great. you know, to be honest, I have to admit that my first thought was, "What if the screen goes bad?" <laughs> that was literally what my first thought is: if technology goes wrong, which it does, uh, we could have a problem. Then Technology's you're gonna going wrong. When does that ever happen? We won't get into <laughs> burning up cars uh, technology stuff. Yeah. Nah. Well, speaking of technology <laughs> gone wrong. This Have is we suitably mashed that one to death? Yes. No? Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. You jumped all over that, didn't you? I mean, well, Daimler's not a sponsor. We can, we can slime them. It's okay. <laughs> well, here we go. Uh, Ford issues a recall Friday for nearly 550,000 oh, Super Duty pickups man. in U.S., Canada, and Mexico. And here's, get this. The carpet flooring in the trucks could potentially catch fire <laughs> after a crash. Oh, that's bad. I'm yeah. like, how how do how do you get how do you get a carpet to what's going to start a carpet on fire? Well, they're in the fuel lines between the carpet and the floor. Yeah, but oh. no, I don't think so. I don't. What's going to catch fire on the carpet? You're, you're, what's going to catch fire on the carpet? Yes, the carpet's going to catch on fire. Carpet padding, tar, the whole floor is covered in tar. That's yeah, true. Yeah, but what would cause it to start fire in the first place? Uh, wiring. The one that would run wiring down the floors. So you're g- it I, could. So they didn't put fire retardant in these mats? No. Well, they, they might or and might not. And that's why they're a fire hazard? Yeah. Look, Shane and I just spent the better part of an afternoon ripping the tar out of the floor of the, 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 the rod we're rebuilding. Right. I mean, it's literally tar. Yeah. Although we covered it with rust reformer, so now it's safe, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's frozen free. The yeah, tar right. is, is a sound deadening material. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then you spray that stuff underneath the uh, the vehicle as well. Yeah, it's nice and quiet. It just happens to burn. Yes. Yeah, because it's rubber. Yep. Well, it's sort of. Tar. It's creosote. It's <laughs> creosote. <laughs> it's it actually burns really well. Yeah. It does. Yeah. And once it gets going, it doesn't yeah. stop very quickly. Yeah. The, the carpet true. itself is super flammable. Oh man! So I'm good. I'm just I'm thinking good. the carpet must be a non-flame retardant. It didn't pass the the uh, the QA. And there is another recall that happened just recently. Did uh, Did you hear about the one from Mazda? No. Several Mazdas. I don't know how many. I got a letter because I have a CX-9, and uh, they have a recall out now on the passenger side airbag actuator in. About five years worth of CX-9s, the older ones. I think the 2000, oh, right. 2014 was the newest one. Um, but yeah, something, so something's wrong with the activator, which basically means if you get in a crash, it's not going to go off. Um, and, <laughs> you know, they're you know, I don't worry too much because my car, I got, I got cars. If I got in a passenger, I don't like it. Yeah, we got cars system. in our family that we drive that has no airbags. So, yeah, you but, know, you know. It's not- so they they sent me the letter and you got to go get it fixed. But yeah, there's a bunch of them. Your if insurance you, is the one who cares about these things. Well, Yeah. Yeah. If you get an older car without airbags and a newer car with, the ch- it's cheaper on the insurance with the newer car with airbags than the older car without. That's what they charge. It's more. Well. Anyway, th- so much for the recalls. <laughs> Gosh. Um, but wait, there's more. Well, no. Uh, I just wanted to say uh, rest in peace, racing legend and safety advocate Bill Simpson. Oh, that's right. Who uh, are yeah. renowned in global motorsports for his development of groundbreaking safety equipment died Monday, December 16th. Yeah. Uh, due to complications and recent health problems. I mean, he was a his long racing career. Yeah. And in May of 77 when he he stopped because he realized I'm thinking about a phone call that needs to be taken about safety products business he had started up and since then over 200 products that are all safety oriented to help racers run right uh you yeah. know everything from the first uh fire rep- retardant suit and all that oh, yeah. think about how many lives and how many individuals oh, sure. uh, huge impact on the industry. huge impact long and he's like that's my legacy and well uh, as so. he should be well that's, we love to hear things like that yeah that's absolutely. a positive thing even though he's passed at 79 he did leave a good legacy so you know what else i'm seeing more and more of lately bob bondurant's racing school is now advertising all over facebook well wow. wow that's very cool as a graduate, I think that's really cool. Hey, our first segment is, uh, as we say, back to the blacktop. We're done with that one. We will be back with a chat with a guy who's got a very cool hot rod and custom restoration outfit. Hi, it's Jeff Conwell with the Monsters and Manson. Giving a big shout-out to everyone at Horsepower, Chrome, and Rust. Bye, man. 
out of gear and my heart's in overdrive i've everything to fear i ain't never been more alive uh, hey, hey. horsepower chrome and rust is back with the first half of the windshield view and this week we're talking with a guy we know very well someone who has started his own shop that is as portable as the cars he builds witch doctor restoration is owned and operated by our very own co-host Shane Osborne. Welcome, Mr. Osborne, to the show. Well, thank you. It's uh, <laughs> a little bit different on the side of the disc. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's kind of cool. I mean, we do get to talk about our stuff periodically, yeah. but this is actually, if anything, sort of cooler because you've been doing this for a long, long time. For those yeah, who may not, years. yeah, for those who may not, you know, be aware, there's a bio, of course, of all three of us on our uh, Facebook page and on the show page. But uh, Shane, if I may be so bold, uh, Shane is a master mechanic and restoration guy, and he's been doing this for 27 years, yep. long time, built God knows how many cars, trucks, oh, yeah. vans, <laughs> dune buggies, motorcycles, uh, trailers, popcorn machines, bicycles, you, bi- yeah. bicycle, <laughs> and you name it, he's probably built it, and... Uh, has most recently been the general manager of a, an outfit that was a sponsor of the show for a long time. Um, anyway, Shane decided not too long ago that he would hang out his own shingle yes, and do what uh, a lot of people do, which is you know work for themselves. So he's got the coolest boss on the planet. I mean, what what is not to like <laughs> Does about that? Does that mean that? when he wants to sleep in, he can? He can sleep. Sure. Oh, he's kind of picky that way. The nice thing about being your own <laughs> boss, though, is you know exactly how much money you're not making when you. Oh, don't off. tell me about that, Brady. <laughs> My wife reminds me that like, all the yeah, time. If I can, I can not work today. Of course, I won't yes. eat today. But <laughs> yes. yeah. So what I wanted to ask you. So first off. The name of your outfit is Witch Doctor Restoration, which I think is personally very cool. By the way, there's a brand new spot, which we're going to start running for Witch Doctor, which will show up on the show uh, shortly. So please listen to it because it's very cool. And the fact that it was voiced by yours truly has nothing to do with the fact that I think it's a very cool spot. It's just sheer coincidence that the genius of the voiceover talent involved in that spot happens to be my own. But what I was going to ask you is... Very well done. <laughs> and, and humble, too. Did you notice? <laughs> um, how did you come up with Witch Doctor as uh, Witch Doctor Restoration as a name for your outfit? Um, you know, everybody kept calling me that because I'd fix, I'd fix things without looking at them, and I usually <laughs> do. What I could say, "Oh, yeah, I think I know what that is," and ninety percent of the time, I was right. Yeah. And so uh, I somebody called the Witch Doctor long ago. By my You're friends. it, huh? Yep. That and uh, uh, that having eyes on my fingers. Eyes on your fingers. Yes, you That's a really fever dream that I just <laughs> soon not know about. <laughs> but, well, you know, I, I have to say. Is he, do you shake the rattles? <laughs> yeah, I shake the rattles. Yeah, the idea of you in a loincloth with a bone in your nose, I don't want to have. <laughs> that. I can't unsee that. It it's here. not the same. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I know. Steve is over there now. There's a there's a garbage can right over there in case you want to. Um, I can say that uh, Shane has, you know, helped. Don't rattle the Tic Tac box. He was <laughs> the cheapest sound effects guy on the planet. Don't even start with this. Um, <laughs> um, I've had Shane over helping me on my on my two project vehicles now, and I can actually swear to this. Um, my wife Georgia, who owns one of the cars that we are building, um, I've told her that you know we're out doing something, and. Uh, I said, Shane's looking at this. He looked at the frame and he said, well, we can do this, but we can do this as opposed to that. We can flat patch it as opposed to having to cut and, and replace a, you know, a patch. It's easier to do. And I understand what he's saying because I'm enough mechanical that I get it. She says, how does he know that? <laughs> and I said, well, first off, he's probably done it 500 times before now. But also, when you're that good at something, you just know. You don't have to think about it. You just kind of know it. And... Um, I'm sure that Witch Doctor came from some of that because you're not the only person to have noticed it over the years. I've talked with some of the guys you used to work with, and they say the same thing. You know, it's just it just sort of comes out. So, so let me ask you: You weren't always the Witch Doctor. No, you had to pay some dues. Oh yeah. So, what was your first mechanics job? Where did you? How did you get started doing this? I started tearing stuff apart when I was five years old. Well, uh, I did too, but I got punished for it. Yeah, I did too. I mean, the quite, toaster was never the same. <laughs> quite often. Um, I tore a lot more apart. I wanted to see how yeah. everything worked. Sure. So I started tearing it apart. And then I uh, had a few pizza jobs and 
Yeah, those are what they are. Yeah, everybody does it. And then I got a job at a gas station. Yeah. And uh, decided, huh, I could really get into this. You could do that. Yeah, so I went from there to an oil change place. So you, when you were at the gas station, what did you do at the gas station? I mean, aside from pump, did you actually pump yeah, gas? I pumped gas. Yeah, yeah, that was back in the day when you had gas chargers. There, guys, were, sure would yeah, do that. Yeah, clean the windows and check the oil. But you did some oil changes and some yeah, just little stuff break like that. jobs and stuff like that. Did you? Uh, no, actually, I was just a gas jockey. You were just a gas jockey. Yep, uh, it was with, until I went to uh, service and started doing oil changes. Ah, and I get. Uh, Econo Lube, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah? Econo Lube. I remember those guys. Are they still around? I got around? fired from those guys. You got fired from Econo Lube. <laughs> it was hard to get to work on a bus. I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> they got me a car and got me a job at a local Volkswagen shop. Ah, okay. And, uh, oh, that's where that came yeah, from. Yeah, so I started getting in there, and I'm 18 years old. So oh. I to riches. And sure. Had some really good mentors. Yeah. Uh, well, not to mention my dad was a mechanic my whole life, so. Okay, so you kind of came up with yeah. some of that in the family. Oh, yeah, I was working on cars when I was little. Ah, okay, I mean, I started, all right. My dad gave me my first car when I was 13. He says, if you can make it run, you can have it. What was it? Yeah, it was an 84 uh, Chevrolet Cutlass. Uh, that would have been an old. What's the one with the square back window? Uh, uh, Caprice. 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 Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Okay. Yes. Sorry, I had to for a mental block there for yes, a second. So I. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were going to say citation or something, and I was going to go, I, ooh, no. <laughs> I messed with it for about three weeks. Yeah? Believe it or not, I got it running. Nice. So at 13 years old, I was the only kid in the neighborhood that had a car. You with. were the coolest guy in the neighborhood. Oh, yeah. You couldn't go anywhere with it, but well, at least I, you we had, had a, a two and a half acre field I drove it around in. There oh, you go. Yeah, okay. yeah. It never made it to the street. It yeah, right. I just tore it away before then. Yeah. <laughs> it was just a big go-kart for me. <laughs> Let's see the site. No, no, it was a citation. No, what was it? We just said Caprice. 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 So it's yeah. rear-wheel drive. Yep. Okay. Because yeah. front-wheel drive cars yeah, would have been kind of fun. They had a 350 in it. Sure, sure. Yeah, so got it running. Drove Nothing wrong with it. Drove the out of it. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't move anymore. Then I moved around to a couple of Volkswagens and ah. started uh, customizing those. So. Now, going to an air-cooled car from... You know, a more traditional thing. Was there an adjustment there? Like, I mean, obviously you can't I've blow up a radiator. I had a passion for them. Yeah? So it was, I don't know, I, I think that way. So. Data wiring and. I've, I've had an answer to this question from a bunch of different people. So now you get to give me your pieces of it. Um, what is the single most difficult thing to do when you're working on a Volkswagen? A Volkswagen? Yeah. I mean, I know they're kind of simple, but <laughs> there's something ab- about them that's always, you know, everybody's like, ah, I don't really want to do that. It'd have to be the torsion bar, the torsion uh, spring plates in the back. Okay. That's what that's what I get, the suspension. Yeah, the suspension. They're not complicated. They're, not complica- they're just a pain in the neck they're, to get to. They're dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> they hurt you. Yeah? Yep. Well, it's not any what worse than- What do they than- come unsprung and- s- Oh, Yeah. Yeah. You slap down and slap you down. have your leg in the wrong spot. If you, yeah. That. Well, I've pulled out springs in the front and you gotta, or you got to compress everything down and you're just hoping to Dickens that it's, you don't. Well, yeah, compressing pop. coil springs, that's yeah. that's the stuff of danger there. That's amp- yeah. amputation. You the, you're, you're, you're screwing that thing down with oh, the coil no. clamp. or yeah, and, we're out and, of the internal, so you got to pull the bar outwards as the spring unloads. Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. it's like a big... Uh, Guillotine. Yep. <laughs> That's why they make shop tools. Yes. yes. There's a tool for that. Yes, there is. Volkswagen. It, it, it's not a rope. It, it's a bungee cord because that's what yeah. most of us use. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's, you know, service tools, factory service tools. If you get the shop manual for almost any car, yeah. there's two or three, well, sometimes there's a couple of pages of specialty tool 101 that you got to have oh, in yes. order to do this or you die. And yeah, you should, boxes you those. learn, yeah, you learn to pay attention to that stuff because it's definitely... <laughs> it's a good way to lose fingers if you if you can. Yeah, well, look, we, you have lowered. Yeah. Well, we want to talk more about Witch Doctor Restoration. I got a couple of projects that I want to ask you about, and sure. uh, and you get a chance to to jazz with us about how cool it is. But this is this is actually going to be fun because we get to talk to a guy about you know his passion. We'll be right back. We got more from uh, Shane Osborne and Witch Doctor Restoration, and another story from the old car nut books coming up on Horsepower Chrome and Rust. Sit 
back with the second half of the Windshield View. And we were talking with Shane Osborne of Witch Doctor Restoration. <laughs> and we were kind of finishing off about the uh, using bungee cords to uh, <laughs> strap down the uh, suspension of a, a VW. But I've heard, oh, I think there's a, <laughs> what, a world speed record of 26 seconds or something of yanking one of those. I, I don't know what the, you guys can pull those things out and put them back in very quickly, the engines. Oh, yeah, no problem. Is it four bolts that, that hold those things in? Uh, yeah, that's what holds it to the uh, transmission. Four you got to unhook more stuff than that yeah. to get it out, but they're pretty two quick, he- though. Yeah, yeah, two heater boxes, uh, throttle cable, fuel line, six wires, and four bolts. Pulls right out. Yep. There it is. Oh, yeah, the tin work if you want to save the tin. <laughs> What's that? If you want to save the tin, you take the tin off, too. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> The nice thing is, if you're if you're relatively husky, you can just about pick it up and move it yourself. Oh, I can't. Yeah. Well, you can. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> right. <laughs> I used to be able. To, by myself. Yeah, I used to be able to do that stuff. I used to. Be, I took the motors out of Harley's and moved them on my own. That's not too bad. Yeah, wrap around the heads. I got arthritis now. I can't do that crap anymore. Right. <laughs> You just need a nice uh, something strong in the front, so like a leather or whatever. I need him. I just call him up and come, yeah. come, come over. <laughs> you just need something you don't crush your ribs while you're picking it up. That's about all. Yeah. So let's talk about Witch Doctor. So you, you yeah. decided to hang out your shingle, and I know you're going to do this kind of stuff, but you have one sort of sort of thing about your company that's a little different from everybody else. You kind of go where the work is. Yes. You don't necessarily have to have a shop. I mean, you got a place you can work, but basically, if somebody's got a wiring project or an engine rebuild or a, a paint job or something, you kind of go where they are, right? Yeah, well, my uh, idea was is that I have all these hot rodder friends and they're always coming to, oh, I don't know how to do this. i got to find someone to do this part of my restoration for me. So, I just figured, you know. I'm Why are you looking at me? Because <laughs> <laughs> you were one of the first ones. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to be there, buddy. Okay. Yeah, so My money's I, green. I just go to where they need a little help, show them how to do it. And that way they learn. Uh, I can teach, uh, which I really like doing. Yeah. Passing the, tra- the skills on. And it doesn't cost you an arm and a leg. You can take it to a shop where you're going to spend, you know, $130 an hour. Sure. Plus. So it's a little win win for both of us. Well, the the other advantage, I guess, or maybe that is the advantage, is as weird as it is, in in a way, to have somebody come to your place and you know work on your project. I mean, yeah, they do that with windshields. That's well, yeah. they've yeah, been doing that forever. The thing is, I'm probably never going to change a windshield on my own. But I mean, I can call up our friend Thomas Owens, who's you know the right. the the windshield guy. Well, he he does dealer glass services, but he also is the Pacific Northwest Custom Coupes and Sedans uh, Facebook group owner. Yep. He does that stuff, and he'll go to where you are and do your windshield. But I'm not looking at him to say, "Gee, now I know how to do this, and I'm going to do." Because I don't have the tools, and I'm not no. probably not. No. But, um, and from personal experience, I have called Shane and said, "Come over and help me, you know, tear the floor right. out of the Hudson because we got to do that." Well, I'm right there in the thing with him. He's happy to show me. I think he's happy. Oh, yes. So far, he hasn't said, "What an idiot! How come you're doing it that way?" Although <laughs> he probably has thought it. Um, but no, I mean, I now that I've watched him do this, and we're sitting in the car, you know, doing. Now I know how to do it, and and would I do it myself? You know, the next time around, maybe. You know, I I know that there's some tools that I don't have and some other knowledge that I might not have. But I know more about it now. And for me, that's a huge win because I'm not afraid of mechanical stuff. So like, I, like Shane, I'd take it apart in yeah. a heartbeat, but I want to be able to put it well, back and, together, and, too. And, and I know somebody that, that, yeah, is and that's gonna, the value. that needs his help and he well, wants sure. to change out a cam and, yeah. and do that kind of stuff in his car. And so yeah. um, Shane will be able to uh, hook up with him and help him out because... He has done that kind of stuff himself, but he, right. he would like to have someone come in and kind of help him out and, and, and have that additional set of hands yeah. to, to the and the knowledge yeah. to be able to walk through it to just make sure everything's done right and do, do it quicker. When you do it on your own, I know it takes me a lot longer, and if I have somebody who's skilled, we will work together, and it goes a lot faster, and I'm also and, learning at the same time. And you only have to do it once. That's, yes, exactly. that's a, exactly huge, right. a huge, right? huge, because I'll, don't usually, I'll do it, but I'll end up doing it three times. Yeah, oh, yes. Terms. You know I what I mean? I helped my son out with his yeah. car, and we had to do a couple things two or three times. Yeah. yeah. yeah and there's, there's, there's something I still had to fix so after. There's <laughs> so many other working on old cars. It's hard to find a shop. Yeah. I work our car as a carburetor. 
Yeah. Oh, exactly. And so, I mean, I have the guys that call me up and say, hey, can you come out and help me tune into this carburetor? Right. Time in on my Rejet the Chevy, carbs or know? something yeah. like that? Yeah. Yep. And I'm happy to come out and do that. I well, would. now, I'm, I'm not going to spill the beans, but I am sort of. Uh, one of our mutual friends has got a, a wiring job on a 56, 55 volts? 55 volts. 55 volts. And it's all spaghetti. You know, I mean, it's rewire. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a horrible project, and most people hate wiring. But, you know, if you're going to have somebody do something like that, where you can roll it up to a shop and have them pull stuff out and start it from scratch. And it's a, that's a project. That's a big and, and it's worth every nickel you would spend on it because you don't want to do it and you need somebody who only wants to do it once. But here's Shane, you know, which doctor will come out and actually do that project for you. Right. And and you only have to do it once. And you don't have and to, you don't have to put car. it in. The, what, what is that? And you don't have to pack up your car and all the parts, right. put the wheels back on it, take right. it out of your garage, find a tow truck to get it there, yeah. then haul it back home when they're done. Sure. Which I is, just come out and do it in the middle of where you're at in your project. Right. I was going to say, you save a lot of time right there because when you're transporting oh, yeah. a vehicle that you, doesn't run. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Lost, First, got to find the wheels. Yeah. Then I got to put them on, and then I got to exactly. oh, do I need to put it on a trailer? Cap the radiator. It up. What I got to <laughs> plug up these yeah. fuel and, and, and depending lines. on the condition, yeah. you got to get some insurance. You got to cover it from shop to shop. Well, at very back, least you, know, you got to yeah. get a trailer, and you know that yeah. whole process. Yeah, it's a big pain. It's much nicer to be plus. You know, maybe I've got X amount of dollars I can spend on that this month. Yep. Well, that's all I need right now. That's it. If I take it to a shop. No, maybe I got that much. I got to do that every month for seven months. No, because you do trailer rental. This is a heck of a lot easier. Oh, yeah. Have me come over for one or two days. Yeah. You work our way through your budgets. Then. Now, let me ask you this. Is there a kind of project that you really like doing, and is there a particular kind of thing that you don't want to do? Uh, I actually I kind of like a lot of it. Uh, the wiring is one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I say that. Now, but <laughs> I'm not quite doing the 55. Yeah. But uh, I, I, I like doing rest repair. I like doing yeah. replacing the panels, bringing it back to its original state. Sure. Now, when it's, you go ahead and do a a panel restoration, you don't have a metal shop now. So, how do you do that when you're going to do some metal work or I something like that? I still have my metal tools. I just don't have a building over my head. I still have my anvil. I still have my hammers. And, you dollies. got the dollies and the bags and the rest yeah. of that stuff. Yeah. Okay, so you can still roll something, and if you need to get a large piece, you can have it done and then brought in. And yeah, or I take I take measurements, make templates, and take it home into my little shop at home, and I make it bring yeah. back. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Yeah. So there, there are ways around it. A lot of the guys I work with, they have a lot of the equipment in their shop. They're they're hot rock guys. They're building it, trying to do it themselves. They just don't have the knowledge for every step of it. Right. Well, like and by the time you get through, they will have that step. And then they'll be able to apply that. Well, they'll be farther along than they were. I yeah. like to say we all bump up against our skill level at some point yeah. or another. And it's nice to have another head to just go, okay, is this a good idea or am I going to regret this? It's and sometimes it's cheaper to buy a welder and then have me come over and welder yeah. something for you than it is to have somebody else take it somewhere to have a welder. Well, and oh, I, know, yeah. I know with my house, um, I'm doing a lot of uh, refurbishing and, and rest, uh, remodeling interior stuff. And I'm going to do some rewiring. And I got a friend that I can have him come over. He'll help me. We'll walk it through. We'll do it together. And I know it's going to be wired correctly because <laughs> he's he's yeah. a he's an electrician. But I don't have to pay electricians' wages because he's a friend. But I'm going to pay him. But he's going to make sure that my house doesn't burn down. And it's to code. And, and it's yeah. to code. Yeah. Well, let's let me. I want to back. Up, so you'll do get the back same over thing. to Shane for a second. What's I, I know? There's lots of things you're good at, and lots of things that you like to do. Is there anything you're really kind of like? I don't really want to do that one. Um. I kind of lean away from some of the tuning stuff. Yeah? Because uh, I, I don't have a title. I mean, I can get it running, get it running sure. good, but to fine tuning, I got to leave it to the guys that have a dyno. They can yeah. run it, they can adjust it. I mean, I got some good recommendations. For you don't me. have a mobile $50,000 machine yeah, you want to drag don't. around? <laughs> <laughs> and not only that, you need the you need it set up with the wheels so you can sit there and oh, just yeah. Yeah. do the rear... Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, you want me to do a tune-up and tie me to, to sure. like, get it to where it runs decent. Yeah, no problem. And then take it down and do the dyno. Yeah. I, now. That's the disadvantage that I have. Well, now, I got any, to, Oh, I was, I was just going to wrap up that piece. Is yeah. there any particular kind of vehicle you're less than thrilled about working on? Um, I like to stay with the older stuff. Uh, yeah. Stay out of the modern computer. Right? So pre-84 probably. Yeah, pre-84. Yeah, pre because you get to computers and it's. 
Yeah, you start getting into old computers and plastic. And oh, yeah. Mid, mid-90s, 80s, 2000s, yeah. so just not as fun to work with. Unless yeah. somebody's got a new, not more modern car, how, right? Because I did service work for sure. many, many years on it. Mean, but you got, I mean, the modern. tools are at 20 grand and up, and sometimes yeah. that, I mean, the computers and stuff are sort of problematic unless exactly. you keep up with the software. When if you're working on somebody's newer car, um, let's say in the 2000s, but it has nothing to do with computer. It's just uh, some machine work or some uh, engine work where you're just replacing a uh, cam or things like that. Um, I do performance upgrades. Yeah. But I know, I said, try to stay with the maintenance. Uh, I'm actually just sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> we're t- talking I, I performance t- upgrades. Yeah, I got tired of doing timing belts and oil changes. And no. Well, that's the advantage of working for yourself. You don't have to yeah. do stuff you don't want to do. So, so I, we're going we're gonna to plug this stuff for sure, but... Obviously, you're going to be on. You're on Facebook, and we're going to link the Facebook page to our page. People will know. Um, but if they're just like, so I need to call this guy and just kind of walk through a problem with him and see what it is. What's your phone number? Two zero six. Four three seven one seven six five. Okay, two zero six four three seven one seven six five. Right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. We will not forget that. We'll be plugging that and we'll be putting it on the, yeah, uh, I'll have the a show web page. page up here shortly. Yeah. Well, yeah. You got a Facebook page sort of yes, already. Yes, I do have so a, that'll a, be a cool. Facebook page. Yeah. That'll be cool. All right. Now, do you work on any um, diesel, or you stay away from diesel? I stay away from diesel. Uh, yeah. My knowledge base is not the greatest. I may know how they work. I've serviced them, but I can of stay away from the diesel. Okay, because that's one area, because Brady was saying, what don't you work on? And diesel yeah. is one of those. Yeah. Um, I was reading in one of the boards that uh, scouts or international scouts are, are, should, are becoming more and more sought after. And um, I know some of those were diesel, if I remember oh, yeah. right. Yeah. There's a lot of cars that were diesel. Sure. It kind of depends on the project, you know. Yeah. Sometimes I will, sometimes I won't. <laughs> well, and there are that's a different animal. Diesels are a different animal. Oh, yeah. And and what I've noticed lately is some of these guys are hot rodding these diesel trucks and whatever and getting the old Jay had, Jay had amounts, diesels so are a lot of fun. I mean you can you can a lot of make a turbocharged all over the place <laughs> with oh, those yeah. things. Sure. But but it is a different animal. I mean you gotta Oh yeah. And they stink, I hate to say it, but and they glow really plugs. stink. Let me yeah. just say glow plugs. <laughs> hey little glow plug. No, glow plug, not the same glow at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, my ex father in law had a, a, I think it was a Toyota pickup truck, or maybe it was a Datsun. Anyway, it was a diesel, and it had glow plugs, and you had to turn it on and wait, you know, before you started it. Yeah. And you know, it's not that there was any problem with it because it ran just fine. It's just that whole process was different from you know a guy who grew up with gas motors, like oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh I gotta wait. Okay, all right. It's was it the of- Jetta or the Rabbit that had the diesel in it? Both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, they, they both. You they take both it. had a diesel option. Yeah. Rattle, 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 rattle. Go down the road. I believe the Scirocco even had that option. What's that? The, the Scirocco, yeah. Had the same yeah, my, my uh, uncle bought one of those yeah. back in the, way back in the day. And they were they were a slick little car back in the day. Okay. You know what Scirocco means? No. Desert wind. Yeah. Oh, wow. Don't ask me why I know that. I just do. <laughs> it's just one of those stupid pieces of trivial knowledge that <laughs> rattles around in my head. Sirocco means desert wind. Sirocco. Who cares, Brady? Well, nobody, but, you know. <laughs> well, they were probably watching some James Bond movie, and it was out on the the, the Riviera or something, and they said, hey, yeah. Sirocco. Here comes a Sirocco. Yeah. A Volkswagen? Do, also do interior work. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So headliners, door panels, yeah. carpets, seats. Uh, we're going to put a- I went to school for three years for that. It's about time to put to some good use besides myself. Yeah. And you've we're, got a shop in your house that you can uh, do all the stitching and all yeah, that I, kind of I stuff. Yeah, I sewing at home. And you dragged out your sewing machine, I hear. I did. I got <laughs> it all tuned up and got, ah. got the needles for it. So you do passes. sewing machine tune-ups too, huh? Well, now I do. <laughs> <laughs> and those are heavy-duty sewing machines. That's right. Yes, got to be able to sew through leather. Yeah. My wife would probably like one of those, but they they cost a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, they do. Several thousand dollars. Yeah, because it's all leather, and uh, so do you do when you do the uh, leather and uh, vinyl and all that kind of stuff, interior work. Um, how much do you typically do? That's uh, you can you can order it, which is already pre-made, and then it's fitted, or where you're doing the custom work, it where you're on the customers. Budget. Yeah, I mean, custom stuff is expensive. The pre pre-made stuff is fairly inexpensive these days. You can. Uh, Nice kit for about twelve, fifteen hundred dollars, and, and but you the whole car, yeah, because that's in springs and the foam and yep. and the whole bit. And I was talking when to you him. do a when you do a uh, uh, for instance, you do my my El Camino, the the it's going to be completely the bench seat needs to be redone, and there's rust. 
Would you recommend when we pull it all apart to blast the the whole thing and paint I, the? Paint I recommend it? having them take a blast of and powder coat it. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, it Soda all, blast it or something. Springs, yeah, yeah, because yeah. it it'll give more right than just typical paint. Well, it just gets all the rust off. It, yeah, once you get you know, all sandblasted, you bring it back to replace any springs that are broken or frayed, right. and then. Uh, powder coat to put it back together. And the powder coat's going to be a better coat than, let's say, just a regular rattle can of paint. Oh, yeah. It's good. It, well, it, it covers everything. It covers, and not yeah. only that, it allows the springs to spring and not uh, crack or anything. Sure. <laughs> well, I mean, but it, it's a it's a paint. nice coat. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll remember that. Cause, uh, if you want a soda blaster, I actually have one. Yeah. It's not very big, but it works. Yep. Well, it's a nice place to head off here and it's time for cars confidential coming up next so hang with us we'll be right back with horsepower chrome and rust hi this is adam kramer from avance.com you're listening to horsepower chrome and rust well it's time for cars confidential here on horsepower chrome and rust and we have another great story from the old car now book this week, Brady. Well, back. we do. And, you know, it's, I think the hobby that we're all involved in, the car hobby, is, is kind of cool. And there are people who are big chunks of that hobby, maybe people who are well-known and stuff, and they may be passed on. It's nice to be remembered in some way. And one of the things that uh, that David has in the old car nut book is a, a section on kind of memories of people gone by. And this particular one is a story about a guy, a local guy, a Pacific Northwest guy named Bob Beeler. And Bob was a hot rod guy from the get-go. He passed in 2012. But this particular story is part of a series that uh, that several people contributed to kind of commemorate um, Bob's life. And this one goes, well, like this. Shortly after their wedding in 1963, Bob and Tanya Beeler moved into their first home. It was a cozy little duplex in Albuquerque, New Mexico, where Bob was stationed in the Air Force, where Tanya had grown up. The little home was short on space, but long on charm. It was perfect. The real bonus came in the form of a small garage. It was just what a young hot rodder and his bride needed to build a car in so they could go out and be a part of the community that they were most comfortable with, young people and old cars. Upon getting settled and uh, realizing there just wasn't much money available to a young airman uh, on active duty to make any, you know, pittance of pay and benefits you couldn't really eat and buy parts with, Bob and Tanya immediately went out and bought a car and got pregnant. <laughs> of course you did. <clears throat> the... Uh, the car they bought was a 31 Chevy Roadster, and it had more potential, really, than substance And when Bob first got a hold of it. But they got the car home and uh, in the garage, and in spite of not having much in the way of money, they had plenty of elbow grease, tenacity, and a trait that would serve Bob well over the years, the ability to make something out of nothing. The challenge of money was not a unique one to Bob and Tanya in the early 60s. Many a young hot rodder had more desire than dollars, and Bob's ability to make good trades made a big difference. The ability, uh, the availability on the latest uh, Air Force technology was something that Bob appreciated and took advantage of as well. See, it's important to note that Bob never stole one aluminum fitting or braided hose, not generally available to the public at that point, Uh, And those that he borrowed, he would gladly have returned had the Air Force only asked. (laughs) Pure Uh raw power in the light and low-slung Roadster was provided by a 1956 Packard 352 V8 with dual Rochester four-barrel carburetors. It was a real powerhouse for its day as a stock motor with 275 horsepower. But after Bob was done tweaking it, it was about as powerful as anything else on the street. Now, during that time... The car was being built, and Tanya continued to grow, grow rather, with their first child. And when she was seven months along, grandmother came to visit and was not at all pleased to find her granddaughter under an old car rolling around on a dirty floor with her belly hanging out. She voiced her opinion in no uncertain terms that the woman, in Tanya's condition, had no business working on old cars. Well, after the chaos subsided, they had a pleasant visit, and once Grandma was gone, Tanya got back under the car and went back to work. That was probably actually really good because exercise is great for you when you were... There uh, you go. I'm sure that was part of the logic that they... (laughs) Gee, Grandma. (laughs) One day after trying to get the cut just right on a radiator so it would fit in the chopped Chevy radiator shell and having no success, Bob got so frustrated that he picked up the radiator and impaled it upon a stake. That completely destroyed the radiator, so when Tanya found out, she simply told him that he'd need to figure out different ways to vent his frustration and cool the engine because there wasn't any money for another radiator. 
Bob devised a way to mount the new radiator in the trunk. A clever trade produced a serviceable new radiator. <laughs> Another day that caused Bob a bit of frustration was simply getting the radio for the car to work. Now, what should have been a simple issue for him had turned into a seemingly insurmountable problem. And for the life of him, he couldn't get the radio to work. It powered up, but he couldn't get it to even make a buzz, much less play any rock and roll. So before he could hurl the radio across the garage, Tanya took a look and asked quite innocently, where, where are the speakers, babe? <laughs> Thus saving the radio a similar fate to that now forgotten radiator <laughs> as the car continued to come together and neared completion, Bob Sergeant <coughs> stopped by one day with no secret, of course, that Bob was covertly testing aircraft parts in the car. But the sergeant made the comment, you know, if this car had any more aircraft parts in it, it would fly. They had a good laugh and a few beers over that, and that was the only thing that was ever said. <laughs> Bob and Tanya built the car a couple of versions over the eight years they had it. In Albuquerque, it was done in red with full fenders and running boards, and it drew lots of attention from the throaty Packard V8. One night, while cruising the 31 out of the local Bob's Big Boy and heading to the next gathering spot, a Corvette with a particularly eager driver pulled up beside Bob and Tanya at a light and proceeded to rev his engine repeatedly, trying to entice Bob into a race. Bob didn't bite and slowly pulled away as the light changed. This went on for several lights, the Corvette driver unrelenting in his desire to prove himself. With his patience worn and his right foot starting to twitch, Bob quietly told Tanya to hang on. While looking over at the Corvette, Bob signaled that he was ready with a nod of his head. The race was on, and as the revving peaked to a thunderous display of power, the light changed and off went the two cars with smoke and rubber pouring from the rear wheel wells. In the end... The Corvette learned a quick and simple yet valuable lesson. Don't mess with Bob Beeler. <laughs> Others noticed and felt they could best the old Chevy, so there was never a lack of challengers, but the old Packard V8 with the dual quads proved to be a winner each time, leaving the wannabes in a cloud of dust and wondering what happened. By the way, the 31 weighed about 1,900 pounds. <laughs> that makes a lot of difference yes. when in 1965, Bob's enlistment was drawing to a close. They knew they could be moving to San Diego, where Bob had grown up. The first part of that move was to get the old Chevy over to California, so Bob and Tanya loaded it up as full as they could, and their friend, Bud Billings, hooked it up behind his 58 Impala and towed it over to San Diego with Bob and Tanya following. Bob was released from active duty in the early 66. They left Albuquerque for San Diego in a blizzard with a 16-month-old baby. California beaches and hot rods were waiting. After a few years in San Diego, Bob decided to redo the Chevy, make it look completely different. The fenders and running boards were removed. The color was changed from red to dark metallic green. It looked great, had many admirers, and by 1972, it was time to make a change, so Bob traded the 31 that had been so much fun and bested so many for cash and a Norton 500cc motorcycle, <laughs> which he drove back and forth to work. As time would prove, Bob enjoyed riding on two wheels as much as he did on four, the 31 disappeared and wound up in storage for 30 years, and when Bob spotted it for sale in 1999 in a Rod and Custom magazine, the car was at the Bakersfield Swap Meet, and Bob and Tanya wanted to buy it back. As luck would have it, the car had been sold before they could get there. The new owner only wanted the body, and so the old Packard V8 went to a Packard museum. The dual four-barrel carbs went to a guy in Kansas, and the slicks went to a racing museum. The old 31 was gone to the ages, relegated to fond memories <laughs> of Bob and Tanya. Wow. <laughs> you know, so many cars that, that people had, you know, back in the day, you like to think, gosh, that car's still out there, and yeah. sometimes they are. But an awful lot of the time, it's that, you know. Yeah. It's a uh, collection of pieces in 12 different guys' basements. Well, and that's why so many people, when you go to the car shows, and, and uh, I've got a couple of car uh, shows that uh, it's going to be covered on our YouTube channel that's starting up here shortly. Um, I'm interviewing some of these people, and... That's the story. Well, when I was back in the day, I owned this. Well, we sold it, blah, blah, blah. Now that I'm in my later years, my wife and I decided we wanted to buy that again. And so they buy a car that's very similar, remake it yeah. into what they remember their car originally was, add sure. a few little extra finishes to it. And all of a sudden, they're back in the heyday of that early car. And that is... The beauty in, I mean, look, I've got an El Camino. Why did I buy an El Camino? Well, yeah, because why did my, you buy an El Camino? Because my friend, what was wrong? Father with had an El Camino. <laughs> and we spent a lot of time in it, and I loved it. Yeah. And he also had the Chevelle, and it was kind of, do I buy the sure. Chevelle or the El Camino? I went, hmm, I like 
the idea of having a truck and being a little strange, and uh, it's kind of a cult following with those well, and things. And everybody's got a Chevelle. And everybody's there's got a Chevelle. There's a million Chevelles out there. Not oh, that yeah. there's anything wrong with them. No, there's not. I love them. But, if but, I had the money, I'd have yeah. a, I'd have the uh, convertible Chevelle of that same year. But There you go. So it all goes back to my friend and a couple other uh, memories, yeah. and that's yeah. that's where it comes from. I have, you know, I, similar things. I've always liked just a little odd you know, about what, what you got. Something that's not quite the same as everybody else's. And, I mean, even I've had, you know, 14 different motorcycles and four of them have been yep. Harleys, and none of them have looked exactly like anybody else's because that's what you do. You know, you, you, you it's got to have a little bit of personality they to it. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know, I, that's just it's just a fun thing to do. Well, look, we definitely... I uh, have to say thanks to David Dickinson for providing us access to the Old Carnut Books 1, 2, and 3. They are available on Amazon, of course, and theoldcarnutbook.com. Help us if you can. You're an El Camino, El Camino man. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Steve, the producer, Johan's favorite song. I know you searched the internet just to find a piece of non-specific music that you could use that had to do with that. That was from a guest of ours who's a local artist, and actually you can find that on, uh, I think, iTunes and YouTube. You can now. Yeah. But when it, you... I, well... So this is Around the Wheel. This segment is where we talk about stuff that's going to happen and, and car shows and meets and sporting events and, and stuff that we made up, plus the weekly trivia question. And I have to say, this we're kind of in that, that limbo period where there's not really a lot of car activity, although we just went past the International Auto Show, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's still bicycling itself around the country. But, uh, yeah, car show season is kind of taking a hiatus mm-hmm. for the winter years. It's cold winter out there. months. It's cold out there. Yes, it is. Although there's a couple of guys locally, Tony Lapp and the, and the guys at uh, PNW, they're still having flash meets at the local um, Dick's Drive-Ins and, and Dairy Queens and stuff. It's, it's funny. You know, 8 o'clock, flash meet. We're all going to be at Dick's. The heck you are. It's cold out there. <laughs> and yet they'll have 30 guys out there. And I think that's wonderful. Yeah, it's cool. You see it on Facebook all the time. Um, I have in past produced a variety of car shows and uh, I got a new one that I'm going to be doing coming up this next year. Um, It is a benefit show for a local senior center slash um, 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 community center. (laughs) Trying to think of the words. Uh, They're looking for some money. They they lost some of their funding. So we're going to do a car show for them. It's coming up in uh, end of April. Oh, good. Or early. beginning of May. So I got some time, but I'll, I'll let everybody know. But it's going to be very cool. We're going to have slow drags. We're going to have uh, a show and shine. There's going to be trophies. It's going to be for basically any car pre-1980. No, oh. pre-1990. So any car. Oh, perfect. Whether it's custom, uh, lead sled, low rider, right. hot rod, rat rod, you name it. Going to be a lot of fun. Uh, more to come, but <clears throat> I was asked to do it to help them with their fundraising. And, of course, uh I said yes, because that's what you do. Yeah. Uh, but it's going to be a good one. Um, also, coming up next year, next September, so this is a long ways out, <clears throat> the the International Hot Rod Hall of Fame has a local chapter in Washington State Hot Rod Hall of Fame. They have an awards banquet in September, mid-September. And uh, we have a couple of really cool auction items that are going to go uh, for their um, fundraising effort there that are coming from the show, which I will tell you about later on. I have to oh, get yes. one of them framed. But, uh, yeah, we're we're diving in on that one. And, cool. Uh, I will meet with uh, Marv and Helen and give them to them in the uh, weeks coming forward. So, trivia question. Last week we had a great trivia question. It was an absolute killer, and it was 1923 was a banner year for feminism in the automotive industry and what we wanted to know was why was that the case and it turns out terry colombo from Terre Haute, indiana <laughs> got with me on on facebook thank you terry um and he he came up with the actual answer to that did i say 1923 yeah 1923 173 new inventions for cars were reported that year well, more than that, but in 1923, 173, 173 of the new inventions for cars were designed by or invented by women. Really? Yeah. Well, and among them were the carburetor and an electric engine starter. Carburetors were invented by women. 
a woman invented the car. Uh, the electric engine starter was the biggest reason that people stopped going to the electric cars and started going to uh, combustion yeah, cars because they, didn't they no longer the had to cars. crank the thing. And all of a sudden, yeah. the electric cars went started going away. Yeah. And the 1923. Yeah. Wow. So Terry Colombo is going to have his picture taken with the uh, chrome-plated brass engraved uh, bucket of barn fine dust. And uh, next week, we got a great trivia question. This is cool, too, because it's very... Uh, uh, appropriate for Christmas. What's what is one of the the uh, iconic Christmas um, specials every year? Uh, Grinch. Grinch is one. Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown. Brown. Peanuts. Brown. Okay, so the first Peanuts character animation. When was it? What was it? Since we're into Christmas, it's a good one to know. Oh, cool. You get with us on Facebook, and you'll know. Thanks for coming in today. Thanks for uh, letting us talk with Shane about his new. Uh, Enterprise Witch Doctor Restoration. We'll have links to all of that stuff on our Facebook page for Shane Osborne, Steve Johan. I am still Brady Wright, despite the evidence to the contrary, saying keep your eyes on the road, your hands on the wheel, your foot to the floor. Next week we do it again. It's another horsepower chrome and rust. See you later.